Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. So we will be continuing with our binary search playlist, which is the part of the Strivers A to Z DSA course. So till now, I've covered up till this particular problem. And in this video, I'll be covering up the problem search in rotated sorted array part two. But please, please make sure that you watch the part one, because if you haven't seen the part one, you'll not understand the part two, because I'll be reusing the same code that I've written in the part one. So what does the problem state? It states that you have to again perform a search in a rotated sorted array, but this time the array might have duplicates. If you remember in part one, it only had unique elements. So we did write a solution for that. And if I have to give a short recap, the solution was quite simple. We did the simple binary search thing. And right after that, we figured out which is the sorted half. Either the left half will be sorted or the right half will be sorted. If the left half is sorted, we then checked if in the left half we have the element. If we have the element, then we trim down the right half. And if we did not, then we trim down the left half. And if it was right sorted, we checked if the element is in the right half. If it is, then we trim down the left half or else we trim down the right half. Now my question is, why will that approach not work. So over here in this problem, we do not need to return the index. So if they're asking us target three, it does occur at three different indexes. We do not have to return the index where it occurs because if you try to do it using binary search, that will not be possible. You have to use the proper linear search. Now they are asking you, does it exist or not? So you have to tell me yes or no. You do not have to tell me the index. So why does the previous solution for unique elements doesn't work. So what was the first step that we were doing? Identifying the sorted half. That was the first step that we are doing or that was the crucial step because if we do not know which part is sorted, how can we eliminate? How can we check in that part? So that is why identifying the sorted half was very, very important. Now the question comes, well, then it should work for this one as well. But this for this one, it doesn't work. Now, let me write you some examples. So let's write one, two, three, four, four, five, and six, seven. So assume this is an array. It does have duplicates. But over here, imagine you start the low over here. Imagine you start the high over here. And the mid is pointing here. In that case, you can say that this portion is sorted. Why can you say that? It's a very simple thing because low was here, mid was here, and high was here. You can easily say that this section is sorted. Why? Because this 2 is lesser than this 5, or this 6 is not lesser than 2. Thereby, the left half can never be sorted. I did have duplicates, but still I could easily compare, right? Now, let me give you some other example. Imagine I write. 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 4, 5. So even if I take this array, even if I take this array and I write low here and I write high here, so the mid will be somewhere here. Over here again, I can say that this portion is not sorted by doing some simple comparisons between 2 and 4 and 2 and 4. This 2 and 4 is lesser. While as this is greater, so this is definitely not the sorted part. Again, I can do it even if I had duplicates like 4, 4. When can I not do it is my question. I'll show you an example. So if I have something like, just think of this edge case. What if I have something like 1, 2, 3 and goes on like, or rather, I'll give you a very simple one. 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 1, 2. Imagine this is my array. Just imagine. And in that case, the low will be pointing here. The high will be pointing somewhere here. And the mid will be pointing somewhere here. Now analyze over here. You are standing at a position which is 3. And just because this entire thing, yes, just because this entire thing was equal. So the last element tends to be same as the mid element. Right? And over here, the first element tends to be the same as the mid element. And how are you identifying the sorted half? 
by doing a comparison between middle and low and by doing a comparison between middle and high which cannot be done here because the mid is also 3, the low is also 3, the high is also 3. From the naked eye, you can see that this portion is not okay, not sorted and this portion is sorted. But programmatically, can you say this? Because all of them are 3, can you identify just by comparing these three elements, you cannot, yes, you cannot, they have I, it fails. So how can I make this work might be my question. So one of the ways can be said as, hey, sorry, what if we straight away, like if the target is 1, we take that 1 and we check over here because they are same. But again, the question comes. How do you know that the right half only contains consecutive threes? It might happen this half has something like this. So you are not sure. So the better scenario is try to trim down those things. Try to trim down those things. Try to trim down this condition. How will you trim down this condition? It's super simple. I'll tell you. Why do I say trim down? Because you don't know like which. Because over here in the naked eyes, you can see there is 3, 3. But while standing here, while standing here, you cannot just say that we have 2 on this side. You have to do multiple checks. And when the array shrinks, it might be a problem. The only problem we have is array low is equal to array mid is equal to array high. That is the only problem I have. And due to this reason, I cannot successfully identify the sorted half. If I can get rid of this condition, if I can somehow solve this condition, my job will be done. Can I say, let's stand at mid and let's take this 3. This 3 is equivalent to this 3 and this 3. So what I'll do is, I will say, I've already compared this 3 with my target. That's what I always do. Whatever is at mid, whatever is at mid, I compare with target. Don't we do that? If I go back, don't we do that over here? We compare with target. So can I say one thing for short? Since I know all of the three elements are equal, can I actually trim down my search space from this to this and from this to this? Can I trim down my search space? I can because if this is not equivalent to the target, neither will be this, neither will be this because all of them are equal. If this is not equal, this will also not be equal taking advantage of the condition. And if that's not, I'll just shrink my search space. I'll just shrink my search space. That's what I'll do. I'll shrink my search space and I'll continue on the next step. So basically what I do is, whenever we end up with this condition, because this is what is stopping me to identify the sorted half, whenever we get this condition, shrink your search space and go ahead. Again, you can shrink it. Again, you can shrink it. Again, you get shrink it. So what I will do is, I'll go back to the previous code that I've written. Remember, this was the code. So over here, I will say, I will attach the lines just here because this, it works seamlessly. The only problem that I have is when this will happen. Because if this happens, then you cannot do a comparison. You cannot do a comparison. So what I'll do is, I will try to insert some lines and that lines I'll write it over here. So those lines will be, I'll be like, hey, listen, if array of low is equal to equal to array of mid and similarly, if array of mid is equal to equal to array of high, can I say this? I can. In that case, what I'll do is, I will say, please, please go ahead by one, like I don't need you. And please, please go down one because I don't need you. Once you're done this, continue. Why continue? Because I'm still not sure. I'm still not sure. It might be possible that this is also a three. In that case, again, you'll come back to the same. So it's better repeat the process. So in the next step, you'll again get the same. So again, this can work out and again, you'll do a continue. So basically what you'll do is, Instead of performing this, you'll again go back and start these steps. And if you get these lines again, again go back. 
So until unless you get these conditions to be valid, you never go here. Just keep on shrinking, shrinking, shrinking. Got it? So I've written the C++ code. In case you want the Java, Python, and JavaScript code, you can find them in the description. And you can also find out the problem link in the description. So this gets submitted. But if I ask you the time complexity of this, what will be that? Now on average, I can say it's a binary search. Like for most of the cases, it will be B go off login, log base to n. That will be the average case. That means the most of like in most of the cases. What if I give you a test case like 3, 3, 1, 3, 3, 3, 3. So in this case, what will happen? Can you tell me? If I give you a test case like this, what will happen? Think. So first, you take the low as this, you take the high as this, and you take the mid as this. Correct? For the first time, you do this. For the next time, you again do this. For the next time, you again basically, now you perform the binary search. So if there are a lot of duplicates, you basically keep shrinking, keep shrinking, keep shrinking till you are, till you are there. So at the worst case, you might end up shrinking like near about the half the size of the array, near about, near about, not exactly, not exactly, near about half the size of the array, you might. So the worst case can be the go of n by two where you shrink almost the half, and then you are left out with some elements and then, then you do the comparisons. Got that? In the future, if you get problems which have duplicates, always try to solve the problem in terms of the unique and then see where the unique will fail. Because whatever conditions, like in this case, we took this condition. So we saw that that condition is failing for certain test cases and try to fit in that test case on that particular uh, solution that you did for unique. And eventually you will be able to solve for duplicates as well. So this is how you generically approach problems which has duplicates in it. So I hope you've understood uh, the problem solving approach. So going back to the sheet, I can mark this one as done as well. In case you're still watching, please, please, please do consider giving us that like because that highly motivates me to make these kind of videos. And if you're new to our channel, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button right away. And if you haven't followed me on Instagram, Twitter and LinkedIn, all the links will be in the description with this. I'll be wrapping up this video. Let's wait in some of the video. Till then, bye-bye. Take care. Broken.